Many people ask how I make these signs, so today I'm going to show you how I carve in wood and also my unconventional technique of finishing them to make them look so nice. So yes, since a few weeks ago when I published my How to Build an Oak Garden Bench video, where I carved my logo into the front of the oak bench, I have been inundated with requests to show you how I did that. So I thought I'd do a follow-up video and show you today how I carve into wood. So today I'm going to be using this really quite nice piece of oak. I bought this in the local DIY shop where they sell pre-prepared pieces of oak. And that's what I need because I don't own a planer or a thicknesser. So I really need something ready to go off the bat. And this has been planed down to 25 mil or an inch thick by about eight inches or just over 200 mil. So today I'm gonna to be cutting this in oak, but you can use softwood. I've made many signs in softwood and you would have seen one of them recently on my garden gate at the back with epoxy. The advantage of using hardwood though is the grain is tighter and the wood is harder which means when you're carving into it with a router or chisel say it's easier to get a well-defined edge and also well-defined corners as well. The problem with the soft wood is that because the grain is so wide things like corners they lose their strength and they can always pop out when you're working on them which can be really annoying as well. So it's not impossible to carve in softwood, but I would always recommend something like oak if you're doing a sign for your house. And also, if you're going to do a sign for your house, then you're going to leave it outside. Oak has that ability to last forever and not rot as well. So I'd pay an extra couple of pound and use something like oak rather than softwood. Right, let's get on and start this sign. And I think we're going to start with what we're going to write on it. And I've been on the computer and the laser printer and I'll show you what we've got. So the sign I'm going to be making today comes about as a result of a competition I ran with my Patreon members. Every weekend I run a competition with Patreon members and it's normally a mug is the winning prize. But I changed it this weekend and I thought I'd give away a sign. And Mark Green won that. And Mark Green's son, Luca, is going to be joining us in the next couple of months. He's not actually with us yet. So he wanted Luca in uh, oak. So I thought... Now, we all know Luca's going to be a bit of a star, so I printed out some stars of different sizes as well and picked the font and the size of this as well. So I've already done a certain amount of the work. And making signs is so much easier for all of us now because generally we have access to laser printers and a million different fonts and everything else. So really every sign these days for me just starts on the computer and actually producing what I want it to look like before I even think about any wood. So I think I'm going to be making something that's about the size, let's say, of a license plate number, maybe with a star and then a name and then a star at the end. So the first thing I need to do is to cut my oak and decide where I'm going to put this sign. And if I actually look at this piece of oak, I can see that I've got a knot there and I'm try, obviously going to try to avoid knots or imperfections. I've also got some holes here that I need to avoid. Maybe a section here or here. If I look over the other side as well, I've got some cracks over here as well. And I've got the other side of this knot that goes right through the board. So I think I'm going to pick quite a plain area that's got no imperfections here. As I said, about the size of a license plate number, which should give us enough room for the name and then a star either side. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark this out and then cut my board to size.
Once I've decided on the size I need, I trim off the end of the board, which is way out of square, and cut to length. Then I can use my table saw to trim it to the right width. I trim the paper to help me line up the letters and make some faint pencil marks on the board giving me the centre line, that's left and right, and the bottom line of the letters so I can line everything up. Okay, I'm happy with that. I've centred the name and then I put a star either side halfway between the first letter and the edge and the last letter and the edge. And I'm happy with the layout and I, I'm, it's all sort of looking parallel and as it should. Now I'm going to stick the paper to the front face of the oak and for that I tend to use this 3M spray mount but just a little tip if you haven't got spray mount don't rush out and get any use standard wood glue this is really good at sticking paper to wood and every now and again if I haven't got spray mount I use this and it sticks really well. So that's all stuck and I'm just leaving it for a couple of minutes just to dry out. Now at this point you will find a lot of people on YouTube videos now diving into the routing and using this paper as a template for routing. Well you can do that and I've tried that before in the past as well. But the problem with it is that when you start ripping through this paper with the router very quickly the paper starts ripping and it doesn't cut on a clean edge and before you know it you can't see where you should be actually routing and cutting to so my advice is don't start ripping through this with a router we now have to transfer the lettering onto the oak in a way that isn't going to change when we start routing and start ripping up the timber so what i like to do is get a nice sharp standing knife and a metal edge and we're now going to start running our standing knife around all of these curves and the straight pieces as well and essentially transfer the lettering we've got onto the oak. By making these cuts around the perimeter of each letter it gives me a permanent line to follow and for the straight sections gives me a small groove that my chisels can nicely rest in for the final trim. Cutting the curves is the most difficult part of this process, so I take it slow and try not to push too hard. So that's the perimeter cut out and the paper removed and I haven't gone very deep at all because this oak is really hard and if I try to press and go too deep I know I'm going to slip and I'm going to start making mistakes. So this is just a very very light cut and as it was I had to change the standing knife blade halfway through because it just wore the first blade out. So now I'm going to turn to my router and I'm going to use the smallest router I've got with the smallest bit I've got and try to route as close to that line all the way around as possible without touching it. And I'm thinking maybe I can get half a millimetre away from the line. And I don't really have to route very deep. I'm only going to go about six to eight millimetres here. It doesn't need to be deep. And the rest of it I'll then take out with a chisel. Making sure you're not breathing in dust, especially if you're using hardwood, is really important at this stage. So even though it makes seeing the cutter harder, 
I use the dust collection shroud on my router hooked up to my dust extractor. The one benefit of this is I don't need to use eye protection as there's nowhere for the splinters to escape from the enclosure. Although you can't see it, I'm lucky that my Trend cordless router has an LED light near the collet which illuminates the cutter and the workpiece so I have half a chance to see how close I'm getting to the line. Well, that was pretty hard going. Oak is definitely a hard material. The one problem I did have was when I was working on the second star, I realized I was actually pushing down on the top of this unit and actually forcing the plunge of the router deeper and deeper. So I have not no longer got a flat bottom to my star. But the good news is I've got a way of actually covering that up so you're not going to see it. And I'll show you that a little bit later. But generally, it's worked out okay. Now I need to use the hammer and chisel and start going right up to the line. These are through tang chisels, which means that the steel piece that makes up the blade extends all the way through the handle to the top of the strike plate, which means I can use a hammer rather than a mallet with them, with no threat that they're going to fall apart. Here I'm using a set of Vaunt chisels from ITS of varying sizes, which really helps as sometimes you need a small chisel for the corners and the nooks and crannies, and other times you need a large chisel to get the straight sections nice and straight. The hardest thing to trim up on this sign I found to be the stars, as each point has such an acute angle none of my chisels are small enough to get right to the end. So I had to improvise and found that I could use my Vaunt utility knife to cut right into the points of the stars. These knives I've been using for some time now as they're heavy and solidly made, however I didn't think I'd ever be hitting them with a hammer. Anyway, I can confirm that the knife is still in one piece, albeit with a bit of battle damage on the back of the blade holder from the hammering. So when it comes down to sanding, it does get a little bit tricky. And, and to be honest with you, there's only so much you can do before you just lose the will to live and just give up. If it's not looking right by now, a little bit of sanding isn't going to help much. It's all to do with being careful with the chisel and the router. And especially when you're dealing with something hard like oak, you can do an awful lot of sanding and not get very far at all because it's so hard. But anyway, I'll do what I can. I'll spend another five minutes doing that. I need a new piece of sandpaper. Then I'm going to use my belt sander just to tidy up the front surface. I've still got glue all over this from the paper when I stuck the paper on and I've got pencil marks for my lining marks and that. So I need to tidy up the surface and that's just going to suddenly transform it and make it look very nice. Then I will show you my little trick on how to make the bottom of all of this look quite smart. After sanding, I took the opportunity of routing a bevel around the perimeter of the board. 
I did this in two passes, just raising the cutter in between them, just to make the sign look a little bit more finished. So that's just finished off with a bevel all around the outside. And it looks fairly smart, but you'll see that the hardest thing to finish on this is the bottom of the letters. It's almost impossible to sand. And as I said before, when I was working on the second star, I was pushing the router down. I've ended up with the right mess of this star rather than the level bottom. It's up and down all over the place. So I'm now going to show you what I do to solve that problem. And it looks fairly nice. And I've not seen this done before. So maybe I'm claiming rights to this. I don't know. But anyway, see what you think. And the first thing we need is some wood glue. So to create that dappled effect I had on the logo on the outdoor workbench, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put wood glue at the bottom of these letters and these stars. And then I'm going to stick to it a certain amount of oak sawdust, which I collected earlier from the cutting the boards. And what that's going to do is that's going to even up everything. It's going to hide a multitude of sins. All my marks that I've made from my routing and my chiseling as well, and especially on this star, it's going to cover up my uneven bottom. I use a small paintbrush to spread the generous amount of wood glue to all the corners of the letters and stars, and then simply sprinkle the fine sawdust over the glue. Once I've got plenty of sawdust on the glue, with something flat, I'm using the top of a carpenter's pencil here. I gently push down the sawdust into the glue to make sure I've got proper contact between the two. Topping up with sawdust as and when needed, if I see any glue on the surface. So the finish is as simple as that and all I have to do now is let that dry and any of the sawdust that hasn't stuck to the glue will naturally just fall off in the same way as putting glitter on glue when you're at kindergarten if you can remember that far back. So once it has dried you can finish it however you want. I actually like the bare oak look to be honest with you. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and some of the unconventional ways of making a sign as well. If you have please check out the other ones on the channel and please subscribe and go and have a look at our Patreon page where you you too can enter for competitions like this and support the channel as well. So until next time, I'll see you then.